I know I said I wasn't going to be a review channel before, but when a local business asks me to review one of their products on my show, I think I'll do it for them. And there's a new business that opened up. They're based in Sioux City, Iowa. They're their own independent business, and they've asked me to review one of their products on my show. It's one of their flagship products. It's one of their standard models, and it's a really nice Kydex holster made by a company called Dynamic Defense. Uh, put a link to their Facebook page and the details below, and another place where you can get it. More to that later. Let's check this out. So how I'm going to do this is I have my GoPro on, and as you can see, I have it on my phone here, so I can see how I'm doing, and using my GoPro gives you a nice point of view review on this. So this is the standard model Kydex holster made by Dynamic Defense out of Sioux City, and this is based on their Glock 17. I have it sitting in here. We'll pull that out in a minute. Right now, let's take a good look at this. This is a, uh, I wouldn't say it's big. It kind of looks big, but when you come to the curvatures on this, they have it nice and curved here, pretty good to fit on the center of your hip. And the first thing I noticed was sometimes you're gonna see Kydex holsters that have like 10 rivets along the sides here. This one only has these, just those few. I don't know exactly about saving on weight because it actually is quite light already, but aesthetically, when you look at it, uh, it's not all cluttered up. It's nice, it's got a nice smooth look to it. I like how these are kind of like a nice, uh, if you can see it here, like a step down setup here. It uh, looks pretty nice. It should hold on you pretty well here. The very first thing I noticed on this was the angle cut on these. Now, when you put a belt in here, uh, you're kind of, I wouldn't say you're limited, but if you measure this out, I'm gonna get a tape measure here out in a minute, that you can only really go no bigger than a one and a half inch belt. But who really wears a belt bigger than one and a half inch? So what I have here is I have my belt that I usually wear. It's getting a little worn here. But it is no wider than about one and seven sixteenths. And then your cut here is roughly one and a half. You get about a good two inches here, but down here, this part here, that's where your belt tightens up on. So as I put my belt through here, my one concern is, is that I have some play. Which I don't think is going to make that big a deal. We'll see how noticeable it is after I put it on. I've tried the holster on, it is quite comfortable, but I haven't really tried doing much drawing with it. I was saving most of it for this video. There's a little bit of play, but uh, most belts come between one to one and a half, maybe even two, but I wouldn't really wear bigger than a two inch on here. But only one and a half inches of uh, space you have here. I don't know how well a two, two inch would fit, you put a two inch belt in here, it might fold up in that angled cut here. So no bigger than a one and a half. Another thing I really noticed on this was the attention to detail. I don't know how well you'll be able to really see this in the light here, but you can see there's the even the serrations, the slide serrations are in there. And even the, well, for lack of a better term, serrations for the magazine release. I don't know how well you can see that in there, but that's pretty nice. Uh, I know the lighting here doesn't really do it justice. I got a flashlight here, you can probably see inside of this. But the attention to detail is really nice. 
every little curvature of the pistol has been formed to fit in this holster. The lighting here, I don't know if you can see it, but they have a curvature here and a curvature along here for your Picatinny rail. The curvature here, I really like. It's only on the one side. But the curvature here compensates for whatever front sight aperture you're gonna have on your pistol. There are so many different kinds of front sight posts you can put on that. And there's a little bit of extra spacing in there to compensate for whatever front sight post you wanna have on your pistol. I really like how it is formed up. Every little curvature and detail for your pistol is on here. Let's pull the pistol out. Safety check. Glock 17. The story behind this Glock, this is actually the Glock that was owned by the gentleman that made this pistol. So naturally they're gonna fit real nice. Let's check it out. Yeah. There's a nice audible click in there. It's pretty nice. And it's not just the audible click in there. When you shove it in there, you can feel it just form fit right in there. This is nice and well fitted. Like I said, the Picatinny rail. This is nicely fitted around your trigger guard. Another thing I like really good about it, or another thing I like about it that's really good is that there is the slightest bit of cutout right here for your trickle guard and it's on both sides so when you go to draw your pistol and your figure is going to be right here when you go to draw you're not rubbing on the holster so when you go to draw you got no holster rubbing on your finger another thing i really like about it how it is nicely formed to fit every curvature of the pistol right around in there i mean can you see that it even has the nice little indentation for your thumb well and that's actually on both sides right in there and it is nice form fitted on the top for the streamline along the side of your pistol here I think that is really nice attention to detail. This little raised part here, I suppose is to compensate for your, for this part of the pistol here, your extractor. Then you have one thing that is really, like I said, attention to detail that I've noticed is that you have your slide release and slide release, slide stop. We all know that this is a dual purpose item here and I'm not gonna get into that discussion, but you can have the raised slide release or the extended slide release put on there and they have this spot open right here made a little bit larger to compensate for that. So you can put about any kind of slide release there is on the market on this pistol and it will fit this holster. That's pretty nice. That's good thinking. So far, everything has been really good about this. There is a little bit of flex in this, but it is plastic. I don't know what other kind of durable, what more durable plastic they can use, but it looks like it's screwed in there. I'm not going to try, I'm gonna leave it alone, but having this screwed in there like this instead of riveted means that it's quite possible that you could have different options to put on here. And if you don't like this, it's possible that there are different options you can put on that. Maybe there's one that can come out more square so you can put a bigger belt on it or something. But for a regular everyday carry, this will suffice. This works pretty nice. They also have this curvature here to compensate for easy fitting and for it to lock in there really nice to have it on the back side to keep the front smooth for a nice look. I really think that that's really good attention to detail with the raised part here 
for whatever front sight post you want to put on there. I actually have a nice big Trijicon front post. This is the one that came with the pistol. It fits in there really good. Like I said, there's the audible click. And then it just feels like it just sucks in there. Like it's just been vacuum shut. Now here's an ultimate test. I'm at my dining room table. <laughs> I would get in a lot of trouble if I started denting this thing up. So let's give this another test here. And I'm actually trying to shake this out of the pistol and it is not coming out. Now, it's unfortunate, but I'm gonna to talk to you about the only thing I don't like about this holster. As you can see, some Kydex holsters are cut flush. Some Kydex holsters have some roundness to it for more like a back plate. This is nice and raised up. Now, in order for it to be nice and formally fitted, with the nice, like I said, I like how this is all nice and goes streamlined curvature with the pistol. I mean, that is really nice attention to detail. But the thing I don't like is this right here along the magazine release lever, button, whatever you want to call it. Maybe that could get cut off a little bit. I'm not sure if I really want to do it. It's just probably me. But... I don't think I'll be the only person that if you put the fingers on here, it's going to pinch right in there. So if I go up there and I'm putting the holster on, when you get that click, uh, I, I had to be careful and move my finger away. That will pinch your fingers right in that right here. I might trim that off. I might take it back and have him take a look at it, you know. But if I go to put the pistol in the holster, if I'm using it for competition on the firing line or just putting the pistol on to carry, I will have to move my fingers away. It will pinch. Ah, that fits in there so nice. Let's do this test again. Not coming out. The pistol's in there. But that's... That's my number one issue with this holster. My number one issue. Everything else is pretty much perfect. Is the pinch point right there. Okay, so I have the holster on me now. Like I said, it has that nice curvature on both sides to be nice form fitted to the center of your hip. This doesn't exactly press the pistol up against your body. The pistol grip will stick out some. There is a gap there, probably just because of my roundness. That's right, my roundness. So, but as I put the pistol in, it's in there. It comes out really, really nice. It really doesn't take much effort, any effort at all. Like I said, it has that audible click and it just kind of suctions itself right in there. But as I go to draw, it takes nothing. It is a Kydex holster, and Kydex holsters do have a tendency to sit a little higher. So, uh, as a carry option, this will work. But when I go to draw, it takes really no effort. And I, like I see, I'm pulling my fingers away. I don't know if that's a habit a lot of people do, but with this holster, that's probably a new habit I'm going to have to learn because of this, because I don't want to pinch my finger in that pinch point. But, safety check here. Because this raised up back plate here, it kind of acts like a nice guide to go in there. I mean, I have my nice leather holster that I use. It's a Ritchie Leather Co. based out of Buffalo, New York. This would be the leather holster I use. And when I say competition, some people think like race guns. I really don't do race guns. I do more of a average Joe type shooting. I do some USPSA. I do some IDPA. And when it comes down to it, my philosophy is, is that in a real world scenario, if I can get really good at what I'm 
carrying, then I should be really trustworthy and good in a real world scenario if I had to really defend myself for other people. But if I use this leather holster, it holds the pistol really nice, but it has it, it, it would collapse a little bit. So when I use, for example, safety check here, my M11A1. When I go to put the holster back, I don't exactly have to do it a lot, but I have to do a little bit of wobbling the tip of the pistol in there to get it to fit in. And that's just the thing about using leather. When I go around and I come around and I'm looking and I'm like, okay, you know, wobble it in there a little bit. Really not that big a deal. But with this Kydex holster, and I'm sure all Kydex has this same issue, but this one a little more than others because of this raised back plate. When I go in there, it kind of acts like a guide. As soon as I feel the tip of it in there, all I got to do is push. And I really don't even have to look. It goes in there really easy. It takes nothing. Remember what I said about the curvature of the, the port point here with the belt? I know this is terrible. Maybe you can see it better back here. When I go, there is some play. But again, it's because of the belt I'm using. But that little bit of play, you can, can't really see it much in the front here. But it's, it's quite minute. It really doesn't affect much. But when I go to draw, you don't even really feel the belt move. Maybe I just need to go invest in a thicker belt, but no thicker than a one and a half inch for this that I have with that angle cut. And like I said, because there's screws, maybe more options, uh, different size of clips can be used for this. So when I'm drawn, I really don't have to look to put it back because of that raised back plate acts like a nice guide. It works really nice. So if I ever had to go to Walmart or something after work and I wanted the quick convenience of just hurrying up and putting a nice putting something on, this is quite convenient. It goes on really quickly. And then I can just put on a nice trusty vest. I come home and oh crap, I need to go get a gallon of milk for the kids. I can whip this all on and just go, you know, raise my arms up. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And yeah, again, I didn't even have to look. It just fits right in there. I'm sure lots of people are uh, have the same convenience with their holsters, their Kydex. But one thing, and it's probably just me, because of my roundness. I can't really do just my shirt. I'm printing pretty good here. And it's probably just this old rag I'm wearing. But yeah, I got the, the pistol grip sticks out. You know, even printing in the back, you can tell. You know, we're getting close to really warm weather here. It's supposed to be summer, but we have a very cool spring. So if I'm coming around, yeah, I mean, nobody minds, but people will mind. So I wouldn't really wear this as a conceal with just a t-shirt. I would use this holster with my vest. We got to the range today. It's a beautiful day. And I have the dynamic defense Kydex holster on me here. We're going to give that a try out here at the range. But another thing that I was asked to take a look at was a new company based out of Spencer, I Spencer Iowa. The 10X Ammunition. It's a remanufactured ammunition. Uh, American Brothers in Arms might start carrying this on their shelves. Right now they're going to do if they do, that's going to be the 250 round packs. They asked me to check this ammunition out for them. We're going to give that a try with this dynamic defense holster. I'm going to start out with just a 10 round magazine 
of the Winchester steel ammunition just to get a, a hang of the holster, a hang of the draw, a hang of the feel. Uh, once I get a little bit of practice with this, we'll break out the better ammunition. Like I said, this sits a little higher than I'm used to. That's one thing somebody will have to get used to when probably whenever they wear any Kydex holster. I'm about uh, five yards away. Let's give it a try. Not that it really matters, but that was 1.72. It's different. It really is. It feels, of course it's going to feel different because it sits so much higher in a different position than what I'm used to. But I've really got to pull up a little higher than normal. One point five eight. <laughs> this is so different. Those two are right there. I think I only have two rounds left. 1.30 that time was. Okay, now I feel like doing a drill. And it's gonna be real simple. Again, I'm a good five yards. I have three magazines total. And there's two rounds each. And again, I'm use, using the Winchester Steel Forge just so I can keep getting used to this. I'm not ready to break out the good ammo yet. So, it's going to be, I'm going to draw two, reload two, reload two. Let's see how this works. It's different when you're at the range. I think, you know, you saw me how easy it was just to put it in there, but when you're out at the range and you're trying to be very careful, everything is different. It's like uh, once you start feeling the pressure and people are watching, you know, things change. And, mind you, this is the first time I'm really using the Glock. I've never really used the Glock out at the range like this before. This is new. Mags don't want to just drop out. They're just Magpul P mags. Break out some of this 10X and take a look here. They are nice and clean. They are 115 grain, 1150 feet per second. Yeah, they're uh, they're nice and clean. Got a Winchester here. A lot of Winchesters. There's a Federal. They all look pretty consistent if you line them up. Can't really see them very well, sorry about that. But they're nice and clean. Nice and shiny. As if they're new. All the, uh, uh, sure enough I dropped one. A little bit one to test and see how they hold up in the dirt. I'm not seeing any funny imperfections in these. If you look at the, uh, the primers. They're all evenly seated. I got too much of my hand in my want at once here. But yeah, they're nice and neat and clean. Yeah, this is terrible. But I'm not seeing any real discrepancies. They all look pretty consistent in their in their crimping. 
but if you rub your finger across the edge here, it's just a tad rough. Let's check another one here. Yeah. You run your fingertip across here, it feels like there's just a tad bit of a rough edge. I'm not sure if that's normal. Let's break out one of the steels. Winchester Steel Forge. Nothing really. I mean, these are brass. Brass ain't gonna hurt your pistol, but just ever so slightly is there a rough edge on the rims. I'm grabbing a different one. Here's a different one. Yeah. They're still nice and clean though, everything's pretty consistent. You line up five or six of them in a row, they'll be alright. Let's uh, let's give them a try. So for this next drill, it's going to be a competition, combination of two things. Drawing from the new holster and using the new 10x ammo. It's going to be real simple. It's going to be just draw 2-2. And then draw again, 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to got 10 rounds here. It's just going to be feeling how the ammo works and running the ammo that I'm using, how the holster works and then running the ammo I'm using. So uh, what I just did there, I'm so in the habit of looking. I still watched my pistol go into the holster. I, I guess I can't emphasize enough at this time what a good habit that is for safety reasons if you're at a competition on the firing line. Watch where your pistol's going. Uh, my timer shut off. Here we go. finding myself having to make more effort to come back to draw. Instead of just pushing my arm back, I'm having to, self, having to twist my hips a little bit here. Ah, that was me. That was me. Let's do that again. So because I'm not used to the reset on the trigger, my figure didn't quite reset correctly. Like I said, I'm getting used to the Glock, but it's working pretty good for me. So I have a magazine of six rounds. We're gonna try two, three round strings to check for accuracy with this 10X ammo. So we're gonna come back about seven yards. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven yards. All right, here we go. Now I'm just gonna slow shoot here. And again, let's see how they work in my Glock and let's see how I work trying this Glock out for the first time like this. I'm trying to aim for the same spot every time. Shots. Let's go check them out. All right. Well, for for just three shots, all in the center like that. That's all right, I guess. You know, for freehand, you know, you're not going to get quarter-inch group in here. I don't exactly have a rest. 
I never thought I'd do that on one of my targets. So there we go. We got one, two, three. And I was kind of aiming right there. So let's tape them up and try this again. Okay, so I know this is crazy. We're going to use that as a rest and hit the target approximately seven yards away. Now I apologize that all I have is the cardboard. I forgot my actual targets I was gonna use. So I am going to aim center mass and see what kind of group we get. So we got three shots here. All right, safety check. Let's go check it out. Yep, another decent grouping here. Yeah, this ain't so bad. Let's give it another try. Let's do it with like a, a six round string or something. So I have raised the rest a little higher. We're going to try our 10x ammunition again, 7 yards, we're going to give this a 6 round string. All right, let's go check it out. Wow. So this stuff is not so bad at all. One, two, three, four. I mean, I just made like a whole cut right there. It's all open, I can stick my finger in there. So yeah, I'm pretty sure all six rounds just went right there. So the accuracy, we're looking good. So this one's going to be pretty different. I got the bed rest here and I put up my steel target down there at 15 yards. Let's give that a try. I really hate that I can't get all of this in the picture. Let's try that. You can see me shooting and hear it ping. If you don't hear a ping, evidently I missed. Here we go. Yep, too fast, got too overzealous. That's fun. I think this time I'm just gonna walk up and do two six round mags. Probably about 12 yards since I'm standing up forward. So here we go, my steel. About 12 yards here. And I'm also using the 10X ammo. That was horrible. Sure enough. I'm still, safe to check here, I'm still trying to get the hang of this Glock. It's the first time, my first real range time with it. So far, it's uh, working pretty good for me. Okay. I got my bench rest here. I have my steel down there at 25 yards. 25 yards. Six rounds of the 10X ammo.
I pulled the last one. The last one was me. Looking good. That was fun. I want to do that one again. We're talking about this 10x ammo here. I got one of the casings I just fired, and that rough edge I was telling you about is just it's it's minute, but it's there. You rub your finger across it, you can feel that slight, slight bit of rough edge. Otherwise, uh, everything is shooting clean. It still looks good. Uh, me, honestly, I don't have a whole lot of reloading experience to know what a good reload, reloading brass should look like. But, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, remanufactured. Uh, shoot it when I flipped out of my fingers. I'd say right now, at this time, me, shoot it once and call it good. But uh, it is remanufactured. It is good range ammo, obviously. You saw the accuracy with it. You saw how I did a drill with it. You saw I'm hitting the steel with it. It'll it'll do really good for you out at the range. This is good range ammo. Good plinking ammo. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd keep using this. This is working pretty good for me. This was going to be different. I'm going to try this 10x ammo out of my trusty Beretta. Six rounds. Here goes nothing. Yeah! You know what? I'm gonna go get my SIG. All right, next up, my trusty SIG Sour M11A1. Let's give it a try. This is a lot of fun. Why have I never shot like this before? <laughs> four out of six, maybe. I'm sorry, I'm not done with that one. I'm gonna do four more. I'm starting to use this stuff up. Now, as you can tell, I'm on my third pistol to use. Not one failure with this ammo. Oh no! So I'm using the shorter barrel M11, and now I'm hurting my base here. <laughs> It'll be all right. Here we go. Maybe if I went up like this, here we go. There we go. Yeah. 10X ammo. Spencer Isla, remanufactured, 115 grain, 1150 feet per second. Working pretty good for me. And I'm literally at the range, so yeah, this has been really good range ammo. I really like the idea of being able to have products of local businesses on my shelf. I never thought I'd be a review channel, but if it's going to be a good product from a local business, I'm all for it now. Um, if you seem to have a product that would work good for me to try here, uh, let me know. Let me know in the description below. We'll see what in the comments below. Um, I'd like to give a thanks to Dynamic Defense out of Sioux City, Iowa. This is a good pistol or a good pistol holster. And other than the pinch point, I have no issues with this. I like how this is detailed and good form fitting on my pistol. Uh, good job, it works. Um, 
Keep in mind, Dynamic Defense is also veteran-owned and veteran-ran, Semper Fi. I'd also like to thank American Brothers in Arms in Sioux City. Uh, they wanted me to try this out, and I did. As you can see, it's good range ammo. 10x ammunition. My understanding is that they plan on, if they're going to put this on their shelves, it's going to come in either the 250 and maybe the 500 round bulk boxes, and that's about it. Um, I don't really don't know what's going on with the relationship between American Brothers in Arms and TEDx, but if they have it on their shelves and you see it at a decent price, pick some up, try it out. So, American Brothers in Arms is also veteran owned and veteran ran. So, everything has been working great for me so far. I'm very happy. I had a very good show, very good day. Uh, thank you for watching.